Now, I'm going to review an episode of Raw from the Attitude Era, which, since it's only the fourth retro review I've made, it's going to add enough spice so that, yeah, it does kick it up a notch, but I'm not really breaking any monotony. Since no monotony has yet been established. This one is from the first Raw of 1999. And it starts off with Vince talking about how despite firing Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels continues to brag that he'll make an appearance at that very Raw. Shawn Michaels then makes his appearance saying that he not only can't be fired... And that Vince is going to be the second runner for the Royal Rumble, with Austin being the first one. Thus, meaning that he has all the power here, technically. He's found a loophole to essentially put, to put Vince in a dangerous predicament and no longer an advantage. So he's probably going to get his ass kicked by Stone Cold. That's kind of the mentality... At the time, that's kind of what was inferred at the time. And not only that, but he brought the whole fucking crew. So he brings in DX. So you got Triple H, you got Jesse James, you have Road Dog. You got the whole fucking crew, essentially. Well, aside from a few extras, but... Just, just to mention a few. <clears throat> Aside from that, we get into our first match, which is Ken Shanrock versus Steve Blackman for the Intercontinental. It's not a title match. It's not an Intercontinental title match. But, essentially, Ken Shanrock has two titles. He has... The Intercontinental title, and he has one half of the tag team titles. Personally, I think Ken Shamrock is a badass, especially in UFC. However, I kind of understand when people say he doesn't have the WWE personality. He does seem kind of pale compared to everyone else. Everyone else has like this strangest to your character, but the thing is, he's a meat and potatoes badass, he is a UFC guy, he is the guy that's legitimately in the fucking fight clubs whooping ass. <sighs> MMA kind of shit. <sighs> now, this match does end with Steve Blackman, I think, getting the victory. And it leads to... Uh, this thing, I kind of saw it. I just saw... The Raw, so... My recollection isn't going to be perfect, but... Essentially, this leads into... Ken Shamrock going to... Billy Gunn, because Billy Gunn kind of screwed him over. To essentially kick his ass. And of course, they end up getting in a brawl. And the brawl itself, it was a backstage brawl, is much more interesting than an actual fight. I mean, no offense to Shamrock and Blackman. Their in-ring work was good for whatever that match was. Like, It was only for like a few minutes or so. But it just didn't satisfy. The backstage brawl was okay. It added some flair and... It definitely had more personality, and that's kind of what the Attitude Era is all about, essentially. It's it's about that flair and shit like that. Next, well, there's a lot of segments between Mankind and Vince, essentially the corporation, but Mankind wants a fucking match for the title at Royal Rumble, and... Vince essentially cuts Mankind's ass saying, you're an untalented, ugly, disgusting fuck who puts the fan base over... Now, this is kind of something I, I realized. He might as well have said the WWE Universe like we do now. 
It's no fucking difference. Granted, calling the WWE fan base a universe is stupid, especially when the fan base is smaller than ever, but whatever. Whatever floats your fucking boat. Next would be a match between... Let me see if this is correct. The ordering. Hmm. I hope that clicking noise isn't annoying for you, the viewer. Okay, we just as I suspected, we have Gold Dust versus Mark Henry. And this is when Mark Henry had a sexual chocolate gimmick, and Goldust was more gay than ever. He wasn't just this weird gimmick. He was legitimately homo and shit, and creepy at the same time. Essentially, this match was more about the storytelling between Mark Henry and China. And China brought this weird girl over, this weird slut over. Kind of gives me the creeps. I don't know who the hell that is, but yikes. So Goldust ends up disqualifying himself by doing one of those weird moves where he has... And the name of the move is like, what? Dream Crusher? Dream Destroyer? I don't know. It was, it was It's some sort of spare breaker thing. I don't know. Where... Henry's legs are behind the rope, so he and his arms, and then he's at a very vulnerable spot. And Goldust essentially kicks him in the nuts. This is this could be a good move for no DQ matches, no disqualification, but because that isn't this isn't that kind of match. Goldust gets a disqualification. He doesn't give a fuck. China comes in, kisses him on the cheek, rouses him up, and then explains to him that. Yeah, she liked the sex. She liked when he gave him the dick. But she felt like he deserved two bitches for all he was doing with his penis. So that's what the other girl was there for. And he fainted when she said that. Yeah, this is a legit storyline angle. I don't know how it ends, but I don't really want to know how it ends at the same time. Jesse the Boop. Body Ventura gets his own VHS tape. That's kind of interesting how a lot of our DVDs are about stuff that's nostalgic for us at the moment, but their VHS is for something like Jesse the Body Ventura, which we at the moment won't appreciate. It's too far back to appreciate unless we're really intellectual. Not intellectual, intellectual. What I mean is we can study the WWE and watch all these little things and wrestling in general in order to develop an appreciation for guys with in-ring talent, mic skills, personality, and charisma like Jesse W. Audi Ventura. As opposed to getting another DVD on the fucking Attitude Era or WCW. The later period, not the younger period of WCW. <sighs> Stupid ass motherfuckers. Okay. <sighs> it's gonna kill video time. Next is Godfather versus Tess. I'm a Godfather fan. I'm a Tess fan. This is something that excites me because Godfather, I like his theme. I like his gimmick of a pimp. It's just so... It's just so hood. So awesome. And Tess with his sunglasses, long hair. And just... And just just the way that they contradict each other and the way they present themselves, but they both present themselves in a very badass way, which uses several different forms of masculinity and 
attracting the fans. We think the pimp guy is fucking cool because he got has hoes all around him and he can tell him what to do. And we think a test is cool because he's essentially a movie star look like that can kick a lot of ass. He's essentially an assassin type character. He's badass. He kicks ass. He's just the fact that he's their hidden gun. They're sort of like their sniper guy. That's kind of awesome. Of sunglasses and shit. By the way, Tess, so every theme Tess has is an awesome theme. He never had a shit theme. At least I don't think he did. Cause so they get into a match, but Val, Val Venus gets involved. Well, he's in the background for a while because he wants to get payback for Tess. Because Tess has the corporation's hidden gun, his sniper guy, got involved in his match before. So when that match has like an abrupt, awkward end, that's when Val Venus steps in, tries to get some retribution, and it doesn't work out too well. Essentially... I, I just like, I just like these guys, I, I love Val Venus as well, so, you have an arena, and what we're seeing are three awesome people, mid-carters, who I visualize as being better than most of our main eventers of today, hashtag Seamus and Ryback. Definitely better than Miz. Okay. Next we have Mankind versus Triple H with Sh Shane McMahon as the special guest referee. What I found interesting about this one is that these are essentially, these guys are fa taking like a face roll, Mankind, Triple H, I don't know, because like, in the Attitude Era, I don't follow it very well, because one week someone will be face, and the other week someone will be heel, at least that's the way I see it, it's not like right now where people are heel forever and face forever, or some shit, or even more, just, just right now, the face turn, heel turn process is a lot more smooth where there it's so abrupt it's fucking crazy. But essentially, Shane just wants payback on Mankind. So he get, he get as a ref, he does the fast recount after like kicking Mankind a little when no one was looking. And doing the fast recount. And of course... Triple H does his utter, his, like usual, he says, all right, this is just business. What we did here was just business, but you know what? I'm going to make this easy for you. So he essentially pedigrees Shane McMahon when he least expects it and essentially gives Mankind an opportunity to have Shane at his mercy and better yet, have the corporation at his mercy because he puts Shane on submission that will threaten to break his shoulder in exchange, he wants a title match at the main event for the WWE Championship against The Rock at that very night. So there you go. He isn't taking no for an answer, and of course, Vince doesn't want that kind of bullshit. Now, I'm going to head over to part two. And you know you're going to watch that if you want to hear those infamous three words. Of course you would.